Hi there, my name is Angela, and I was born in a small house in the kingdom of Adopia. My dad worked at the local mill and my mom stayed home growing flowers that she would later go and sell. I also had a little sister named Philippa, who was totally adorable. Things had always been rough for us and we barely scraped by, but we were always there for each other. I didn't mind it when I was a child, but as I grew older, I began to notice stuff. Like one day, my mom made us dolls made out of cloth. My sister was thrilled while I was there pouting. Angela, what's wrong, honey? Don't you like it? Daisy has better ones. They're such tiny china dolls, mom, and so pretty. Her parents are the best. Honey, Daisy's dad works as a horseman for the king. We could never afford those. But the best thing about these are that they'll never break. Eventually, my parents coaxed me out of it, and I also understood that it couldn't be helped. When I was 16, one day I was walking home near the town square when I saw that there was a crowd of people trying to watch something. I was tall, but there were so many people that it was difficult to see. I tried to jump to see over their heads. No luck. I found a barrel of wine near a cart and I climbed over it, finally managing to see a fancy carriage unlike anything that I had ever seen before. It was something out of those fairy tale books like that carriage made out of a magical pumpkin in Cinderella. There was a girl around my age looking around and waving at the crowd. Who is that? You don't know? That there is the princess of Ethiopia. What's she doing here? Why, visiting the village, of course. I was stunned by her appearance. I had never seen such a luxurious looking gown. Her tiara was the shiniest thing that I had ever seen. Everyone was showering her with praises. She looked so good that I was jealous. I wanted what she had. I went home with the images of the princess fresh in my brain. Mom, my gown is old and patched up and my shoes are worn. Can I get new ones? Of course, Angela. I'll get them tomorrow. Can I get better ones this time? Like the ones that the princess wears? I'm afraid we can't get you those, as they cost more than a year of our earnings. I was super mad. How come some people had everything they wanted in the world and others had almost nothing? It's not fair! I ran to my room, tears streaming down my cheeks. I wished I had been born at the palace. Then I would have all the jewels and gowns in the world. Big sister, what's the matter? I hurriedly wiped my tears away and smiled at Philippa, but she had already seen them. Nothing, I'm fine. Are you crying because mom won't get you pretty things? She had probably heard our conversation earlier. It's not mom's fault, and hey, isn't it past your bedtime? I dreamt I was sinking into inferno, except the feeling was all too real. I opened my eyes. I was in someone else's bed and the mattress was so thick, I was actually sinking deeper into it with every second. I sat up and my eyes widened. Where was I? Why was I in this room? Had I been kidnapped? My wonder got the better of my panic as I was stunned to see the luxuries around me. I was in this huge room with marble flooring and tapestries on the walls. Suddenly, the doors burst open and I armed myself with whatever I could use as a weapon, which in this case was a stick beside the fireplace. They looked like serpents, and they came to me asking, Your Highness, what would you like to have for breakfast? Your Highness? When did that happen? I ran to the mirror in the room and looked at my reflection. <gasps> I looked exactly like the princess that I had seen yesterday. What was going on? I was panicking again. No, no, no. This can't be happening. I didn't ask for this. Your Highness, are you quite well? I am not the... As confused as I was, I wasn't about to let this chance go and tell them that I wasn't the princess. So I kept my mouth shut. I was served breakfast. No, it wasn't breakfast. It was a whole feast. Breakfast? In bed? Really? As usual. Oops. He looked way too suspicious for my comfort. After that, I raided the princess's wardrobe, trying out all the gowns, shoes, and jewels one after another. It felt wrong going through someone else's things, but technically, I was the princess now, and they were mine. I could finally have everything in the world. While I was doing that, a servant approached me. Your Highness, it's almost time for your lessons to begin. What lessons? What do you mean? Um, <clears throat> yes, of course, the lessons. I definitely know what you're talking about. The servant looked at me strangely, then left. I wiped my brow. That was close. I had been thinking that her life was all play and no work, but it now seemed that I might have been wrong. I followed the servant into a room with several tutors. The king was there as well. I could tell because he had a big crown on his head. Come now, let's show your father that posture we've been working on. I told him how excellently you've been doing and he wanted to see. One of the tutors came up ahead and placed a whole stack of books right on my head. I didn't even know what to do. Go on, walk. I walked slowly, very carefully, so that the books wouldn't fall. But of course, they did. Right after I had taken two steps, they toppled to the ground. I looked at them fearfully. 
Maybe she's just nervous because you are watching, your majesty. Let's give her another chance. She placed the books on my head once more, and they fell over again, and again, and again. The king looked at me with disappointment in his eyes. You are a disgrace to the family. I can't even look at you. And he left the room with his advisors. I had never felt more insulted. Over the next few days, I failed at everything I did. I fell so many times while horse riding that my body was covered in bruises. I couldn't dance. I couldn't even curtsy properly. People began to notice the odd behavior, and there were whispers everywhere I went. Even the servants were whispering about me. And that there is their heir to the throne. Hmm, princess, I could do a better job than her. So improper. No etiquettes at all. It's as if she was raised in a barn with animals. Everyone was talking behind my back. Word spread that the Princess of Adopia doesn't know the first thing about being a proper princess. I wonder what will happen to the kingdom. Oh my god. I was sick of it. In one week, I had had my fill. All the luxuries did not compensate for the trouble and mockery I was going through. I missed my family. They had always been nice to me and had never made me feel bad about myself. <laughs> unlike the mean king. So I decided to go back. I went to my village cottage, very excited to see my parents after so long. What I saw next blew my mind. I stood there at the window, my jaw hanging open as I saw myself staring back at me. She was seated at the dinner table while my parents, dressed as servants, served me, or rather someone who looked like me with all sorts of things that they had never given me. The girl who had stolen my body looked up and saw me. She grinned evilly. Suddenly, she turned to my parents. Why do these crumpets have so much butter on them? I told you to put less butter. Look at them! They're pulling! Angela, don't be angry. I'll make new ones right now. It was my mom. I couldn't believe that she was being treated this way by her. I had a hunch that it was the princess. She then turned to my father. Did you bring it? Of course. Only the best for my baby girl. He showed her a dress which was obviously no match for what the princess wore, but it was still expensive and way better than anything that he had ever gotten me. What the heck? How had she manipulated them into doing this for her? Don't you know I hate pink? I can't wear this. Go and change it. Okay, okay, don't get angry. It's not healthy. I'll go and have this changed right now. Don't worry. What on earth? I had been nice and kind to them all my life, and they had never done nice things for me. And here she was being all rude and mean to them, and they rewarded her like she was the best daughter. I was so mad, I almost barged in. When both my parents were gone to get her the things that she asked for, she turned to Philippa. What you got there? Can I see? Philippa handed her the doll that mom had made for us all those years ago. She couldn't even sleep without it. She took the doll from her and tore it completely. This is trash. You're too old to play with this. Now shoot! That was it. The last straw. She had tested my patience. Who did she think she was? Bullying my little sister? I barged inside. What do you think you're doing? I'm doing what you did. Stealing your life. I didn't do anything. I don't know what happened. Like I would believe you. You're obviously a little witch. I am going to ruin your life. I was angry at her, but I was also angry at my parents. Why were they being so nice to her? Why did they allow her to bully Philippa? I opened my mouth to threaten her with my new status as the princess, but right at that moment, the carriage horseman showed up. Your Highness, the king wants you to be at the castle in time for the royal ball. I looked at her. I'll be back. But my heart sank at the mention of another ball. More people to mock me whenever I tripped while dancing. More whispers behind my back. I was so nervous about the evening, I stood at the side without partaking in the dance. Your Highness, the king requests for your presence. I looked at the servant. Now? Yes, Your Highness. I hurriedly made my way towards him, which was a big mistake on my part. I tripped badly and was about to fall face first on the floor when an arm grabbed me by the wrist and I stared up into the most gorgeous eyes I had ever seen. I was completely mesmerized. Are you okay? I broke out of my daze and blushed. I'm fine. Thanks for catching me. Not a problem. Then I went on my way. I found out that he was the prince from the neighboring kingdom and his name was Charles. I could swear his eyes were on me the entire evening. After a while, I saw him coming towards me. My heart had never beat this fast in all my life. Would you care for a dance? And even though I was scared to, in fear that I might trip, I said yes. I had never been so taken by a boy before. As we danced, I stepped on his toes several times, but he didn't point it out, which was so nice of him. 
Sorry, I'm not much of a dancer. We didn't really have any balls back in the village. Pardon me? I cursed under my breath. I couldn't slip up like that again. Do you like to dance? Not very much so. I would pick archery or horse riding over dancing any day. We talked and talked, and danced and drank punch, and danced again. This was the best evening since I'd arrived at the palace. After that, we began to see each other regularly. We would go on these long romantic walks, holding hands. I was falling in love with him. He was so kind, even to the servants. Unlike most of the royals, I had been around. Things were going great. One day, Charles showed up with flowers and looked into my eyes. I'm falling in love with you, Anastasia. Oh, Anastasia. I felt sick at the pit of my stomach. He wasn't in love with me. He was in love with her. She is not Princess Anastasia, came a booming voice, and there she was, her in my body. How had she gotten here? She is nothing but a fraud, a liar, and a cheat. She pointed at me and then looked at Charles. You're in love with me, not her. Hey, shut up. I yelled, but she pounced at me. Thank goodness Charles was there to shield me behind him. The guards arrived and dragged her away. She was still screaming and struggling as they did so. Are you all right? I'm fine. What a clown. I had had enough. I was sick of living a lie and pretending to be someone else. So I decided to come clean. She was telling the truth. I'm not the princess. I'm just a common village girl. My name is Angela. What do you mean by that? Charles was confused. So I told him everything. I knew he would hate me for lying and pretending. I knew he would never love a commoner like me. With tears in my eyes, I ran to the royal bedchambers. I had fooled Charles into loving me. I was pure evil. I wished I could turn back time somehow. The next morning, I woke up with pain in my back. I looked around me and realized that I was in my old bed at the village. How did this happen? Did the spell get reversed somehow? There was someone crouching by my bedside. Someone who looked scary with a hood over their head. I am sorry. I have to bring you back. Who are you? They took off their hood, and I was shocked to see that it was none other than my sister, Philippa. You did this? But how? She put a finger over her lips, gesturing for me to stay. Shh. It was because you were crying that day. You needed to see the other side of the picture, too. I didn't know what or who my little sister was, but she had indeed taught me an important lesson. Mom, Dad, it's me. I'm back. Angela, what's wrong? What do you need? They all came running into the room, and I giggled as I pulled them all into a big family hug. Nothing. I'm just happy to be here. My family breathed a sigh of relief, having me back to my normal self once again. It turned out that Princess Anastasia had been acting crazy. The village doctor had advised them to let her have her way. I happily settled down into my old life once again. One day, I was picking flowers to sell later when I looked up to see Prince Charles. What are you doing here? How did you find me? That's not important. I want you to come back home with me. I return today. But don't you love Anastasia? If I loved her, I wouldn't be standing here right now, would I? I always knew you weren't Anastasia. I have known her for years. I was shocked. He had known all along? So you don't love her? No, I love you. Come home with me. I can't. My family's here. I refused. So he promised to come back when we were a little older. And he actually did. We are married now and even have an adorable baby. I actually became a real princess. The best thing about it all is that my family moved into his palace with me as well. But what I will never know is how my little sister pulled that off. Little sister pulled that off. Little sister. Hello, guys. I'm Alice. Please like and subscribe. I was born on a farm in San Jose, and dad raised me all by himself. My dad was awesome. He'd let me do anything I wanted. I could dress up in any way for school that I wanted. And most times, I wanted to dress like him. But that didn't go well with my teachers and even my granny. Everyone was always telling dad how I looked like a boy and needed to grow my hair out and wear girly clothes. Once, when a teacher told me to dress in a princess gown for a school play, I refused. She was pretty pissed. Dad was called to the school, but he did the unthinkable. He walked in wearing a dress. He looks so funny. Nah, I look cute. Don't be jealous. What is the meaning of this? The meaning is, we will wear whatever makes us comfortable. Come on, love. Let's go home. Dad was the best. On my sixth birthday, I was so excited about my gift. I had always wanted mom's jewelry box that dad had in his room. But instead, he got me a set of tools and said that I would get the box when I was older. One Father's Day, I decided to surprise him and I wrote, I love my dad with a screwdriver on his car. And dad looked so happy that he had tears in his eyes. Oh my God. Oh my dear God. You like it? I knew you would. Uh.
<laughs> that was my dad. He loved me no matter what. One time, Dad and I went to a carnival in our town, and as I sat on the mini roller coaster, I was shaking with excitement and fear. Just then, I noticed a boy next to me who looked scared, so I just grabbed his hand. I guess we have to do this now. Don't forget to scream. One, two, three. Ah! Screaming made the ride that good. I had no idea. When we were done, I ran and hugged Dad. That's my girl. Girl? I thought you were a boy. <laughs> I get that a lot. By the way, you look like a girl. Thanks for the compliment. It turned out Max was my new neighbor who had recently moved to town. Soon we became really close. One day, he insisted on painting my nails. I hated it, but in return, I made him play soccer with me. Life was good. Dad's business was booming. He was able to get more land. As time passed, I noticed how many people would always be telling my dad how he needed to remarry so I would have a mom. It made me wonder how awesome life would be if I had a family, a complete family. When I turned 13, dad eventually gave in and married. My stepmom was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen, and dad was totally in love with her. She also had a daughter, Abby, who was my age, and I was ecstatic to have a mom and a sister. Abby and I bonded really well. I even shared my room with her. Whoa, you have your own laptop? I could never imagine my real dad getting me one. Yeah, it's really important to have one. I'm sure dad's gonna get you one too. Oh, it doesn't matter. I have a dad. I already feel like I have the world. Abby was sweet, and she was also crazy about making dad happy. Hey dad, see? I won the title of star kid in school. Dad, I made your favorite soup. I polished your shoes. Here's your favorite tie, dad. She stuck like glue with dad, and he always praised her. Oh, you're really the perfect little girl. I guess dad noticed the look on my face. Look, honey, Abby didn't have a dad growing up. I'm happy she's adjusting to us so well. I hope you're okay with it. Okay, dad, but only if you promise me that I'll always be your number one. Of course, sweetheart. Abby even got along pretty well with Max, and she started to be with us all the time when we played soccer. I liked having her around, but I couldn't say the same for my stepmom. She was a total party animal. She loved having her friends and family over all the time. Another thing she loved was shopping. One time, stepmom took us to the mall and then her credit card maxed out. On her way out, suddenly the alarm rang and security snatched our bags. And to my horror, a dress came out of my bag. This is… this is so embarrassing. Why did you steal, Alice? Oh my, what in the world? But how? I felt my cheeks burn as everyone in the store looked at me. But I didn't, I swear. <laughs> Kids, uh, please, can we go? You have the dress. It must have been a mistake. Well, things were a mess, but somehow we got out of it. At home, mom told dad everything. Oh, honey, you should have told mom you liked the dress. Liked it? Dad, it was icky pink. Do you think I would ever wear it? It was big. I did see mom putting it in my bag. When? <laughs> I mean, I would never. To be honest, I didn't see it, but I had a feeling it was her. But dad didn't take my word for it and asked Abby about the dress. And before she could answer, I snapped. Like you really have to ask Abby? Don't you trust me? It's not like that. Wait, Alice. A few days later, when I returned from school and was going to my room, I saw something familiar in my stepmom's hand. OMG. It was my mom's jewelry box. Oh, is this what he gave to his wife? And he can't even increase my credit card limit? Huh, he made me steal that dress. I guess I'll be keeping this one. Oh my God, this is my mom's, give it back. I wanted to snatch the box, but she dropped it on purpose and broke it. And then I screamed as loud as I could. When dad came running, I told him everything. But right then, my stepmom started the waterworks. Honey, I was just dusting the box and it slipped from my hand. I am sorry. I shouldn't have touched the box, Alice. I, I didn't mean it. Oh, cut it out. You know what you did, you lying piece of garbage. Alice, she is your mom. You are not supposed to talk to her like that. You are grounded. I tried to tell my dad the truth, but he wouldn't listen to me. Even Abby wasn't talking to me now. And she moved to another room. How could you lie about my mom that way? She's the nicest. Things got even worse when our results for ninth grade came in. Hey, honey, Abby got an A, but poor Alice flunked again. It's great. I'm proud of Abby. Alice, 
you need to step up your game. I will, Dad. I'll work harder. Saying that, I left the room, but when I turned, I saw Abby hugging Dad. Oh, Dad, I worked so hard just to make you happy. Am I your number one now? Oh, uh, yeah, um, you're both my number one. What? I felt gutted, but at least I had Max. I wanted to share everything, so when he came to visit, I just wanted to take him outside, but the guy was glued to the couch with Abby. Max, we gotta go. Um, is it important? Soccer can wait. This episode of the Kardashians needs my undivided attention. You go ahead. I know you hate this show. What? I couldn't believe even Max didn't have time for me. It was the lowest point of my life, and I just distanced myself from everyone, even Max, though he kept trying to talk to me. I just wanted to focus on changing my situation by studying. I needed to ace my exams and get out of this place. My hard work paid off and I got good grades, and my application to an engineering university got accepted. I was so sure that Dad would be happy, but his reaction was the opposite. Alice, that's good, but New York? That's almost 3,000 miles away. Honey, don't forget your farms are facing the worst dry spell. You just sold one of them for $100,000 to pay off debts. To send her to that college? We would need tons of money. I'm talking to Dad. Do you mind staying out of this? She is right. I think you should just stay here and not leave me. You think I'll just stay here forever and rot? Why do you want me here? So you can just ignore me all day? Never. That's all her planning. She's not a mom, she's a witch. And you think this is the perfect family frame? It's not. Alice, enough of this. I can't believe you have so much hatred for this family. Some perfect family. Ugh. It was the first time I'd seen Dad so angry and disappointed in me. The same day, I saw Mom and Abby talking, but they abruptly stopped when they saw me. What was that all about? Later, when I was in my room, Abby walked in, looking really worried. Alice, I heard Mom and Dad talk about sending you to a boot camp for troubled teens. She has Dad convinced. You have to apologize to Mom. Apologize? Never. Ugh, I'd rather leave this place. The last thing I'll do is apologize to her. That night, I packed my bags and ran off. In New York, I worked hard, really hard, and I was saving every penny I could. Often, I missed Dad, and one time I even called him, but when I heard his voice, I choked up and hung up. I kept expecting he'd call me someday, but his call never came. A year later, I was finally able to get into the university of my dreams. I was doing great, but right when it was time to submit the fees for the second semester, I was short on cash. I couldn't think of anyone but Dad to help me. I had to go back and meet with him. Yeah, we had our differences, but to me, he was still the most important person on Earth, no matter what. I tried calling him, but I couldn't reach him. So I called Abby and told her I was coming back, and she told me that she'd pick me up. When I landed at the airport, Abby gave me the most unexpected news. Alice... It's nice to see you, but you can't meet with Dad. His health was not good when you left. He recently had some heart issues, and it wouldn't be good for him if you appeared out of nowhere. Let me talk to him first, and then you can meet him. I was so worried for Dad, but was glad he had Abby who cared dearly for him. I could lay low for a couple of days. For Dad. When we sat in the car, I was surprised that Abby had brought Max, but my ex-bestie gave me the cold shoulder. They dropped me at a motel and left. It was really dirty and I just couldn't sleep in that bed. At midnight, someone knocked on the door and though I was scared, when I opened it, I saw Max. Ugh, what are you doing here at this time of night? Duh, I couldn't let you stay at this shady place. I thought that you weren't talking to me. Yeah, whatever. Get your things, I'll be in the car. Max, wait, wait, I'm coming. Don't leave me here alone. This place is scary. Max took me to his house, and I was finally able to have a good sleep. The next day, I woke up to Max making breakfast for me. So, you're still mad at me, but making me breakfast. Nice. I missed your cooking, to be honest. <laughs> oh, Alice. You are so funny that I have tears in my eyes when you use the word honesty. <sighs> How could you leave without saying goodbye? You can't imagine what I was going through. I know I made bad decisions, and I'm really sorry, Max. Can you forgive me, please? <sighs> I can't promise, but I'll think about it. If you help me do the dishes. I knew Max couldn't stay mad at me for long. And as we did the dishes, I splattered some water on him and we got into a water fight. And then we just hugged. We spent the entire day together. 
I even showed him the picture of a roller coaster ride I'd tried in New York and how it reminded me of him. Just then, Max got a call from Abby inviting him over for a party because she aced her exams. And just like that, I had an idea. Please, Max, I want to go too. I promise, I'll just get a glimpse of Dad and come back here. He reluctantly agreed. Max sneaked me inside the house right when Abby was cutting the cake with Dad. Just as he saw me, he dropped the knife and came running towards me. Alice, it's you. All of a sudden, we both burst into tears. Where were you, kiddo? You got so angry with your dad that you just left me. You never think of me. Oh, thank God you're back. Just forget about the money and everything. Dad? Um, what? Before I could even finish, someone pulled me from Dad. It was Abby, and she had a crazy look in her eyes. Ah, this was my moment. He finally loved me. Only me. Why did you have to come back? Mom told me you... Ah, Abby, just zip your mouth. Come with me. No, that's it. Just let me say it. I did everything. You told me to steal Dad's money and pin it on her. But nothing happened. Here she is, once again, stealing Dad from me. Why? What in the world? Never in a million years could I imagine that my own sister would go so low. Dad and Max looked pretty shocked. Oh, is that where you got the money for your lip plastic surgery? By the way, it looks ugly. I can understand why Mom did it, but Abby, you, why? Because I deserve to be Dad's number one, not you. Why did you have to come back? I came back because I love my dad. Saying that, I jumped at her and we both ended up falling in the pool. Dad got me out of the pool and then turned to his wife, and boy was he angry. In the end, he kicked her out, but right when Abby was leaving, I grabbed her hand. I realized that she was not a bad person, she just wanted a dad. I was willing to give her a second chance, but definitely not a third.